Hey friends, this is Bobby Shanks, author of the book Undateable, and this is another super fun, super exciting episode of Undateable. So uh, first of all, let me introduce our show's producer, the pastor of disaster, the man of the hour, the wizard of Oz, the maestro of Beethoven's final symphony, the pickety pack, bushwhack, chicken back, grab shack, in brown. <laughs> I'm assuming that was what you were writing. You, you were writing earlier. It's exactly what I was oh, no. writing. Well, I've been working on that all day. I just want you to know <laughs> well, that. <laughs> you know I love you, right? Yeah. All right. Hello. <laughs> that is love right there. I'll that tell you is what. awesome. That is that is brotherly just... respect when you get an introduction <laughs> like that. All right. So <clears throat> next, uh, super. Excited to introduce tonight's co-host, Monet Unique Clark. Hi. So, um, <laughs> tell us about yourself. Um, I am a single mom. I'm a hairdresser. I am single. Um, my daughter is two years old. Mm -hmm. I've been a hairdresser for over 10 years. And I am new to the St. Louis area as of a year and a half ago, ish. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to repeat your name again because people are going to be like, "What did what, what did he say?" Monet mm -hmm. Unique. Yes. That is a really cool name. Thank you. So um, I bet you get a lot of people that are like, "What?" What did you say your name was? Yeah, I get Renee a lot. Um, Mane has been <laughs> one. I think Mane is some sort of painter or something, which is ironic because Monet is a painter. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so nobody ever says it right the first time. So should we call you Mo? Mo is my preferred nickname, yes. That okay. is what people who love me call me. Then I'll call you Mo. All right. Perfect. All right. So we're going to get started here in Fire Us Up. I want a bonfire tonight of requested or rejected. So our first topic is, and actually we were talking about your hat earlier. So in light of that, <laughs> hats on a what date. What, you got a problem with my hat? Just hats on a date in general. Ball caps, cowboy hats, fedoras. I mean, we're talking driver's caps. Yes or no, requested or rejected. Okay. What do you think, Mo? So I immediately go to a story that I have from my very first salon employer who was going over the salon wardrobe. And I know that doesn't have anything to do with dating, but it kind of does because what he said was so profoundly amazing that I've carried it with me through my entire career and like everything about my life and mm -hmm. when I'm going somewhere, mm -hmm. meeting somebody, whatever, first date, job interview, it doesn't matter. Um, it all pertains to this story. But he basically was like, <clears throat> can you wear jeans? Yes. Can you wear flip-flops? Sure. Can you wear a tank top? Absolutely, 100%. It's hot in Florida. You can wear a tank top. Can you wear shorts? Absolutely. Can you wear a t-shirt? Sure. But when it comes to wearing jeans, a tank top, and flip-flops to your job at a salon, can you wear all three at the same time? Absolutely, 100% no. Hmm. So if you're gonna be, if you're gonna Smart. be yourself and your thing is, I wear flip-flops every day because I love my pedicure, or I wear a baseball cap because it makes me feel confident, or I wear my cowboy hat, or my beanie, or my fedora, or whatever it is, you have to make sure that if it's appropriate and it goes with your outfit, great. If you're wearing a baseball cap, maybe you should wear something a little nicer to go with it. And I don't know if you've ever seen the guys like pastors, for example, or um, I don't know, I've seen it all over the place. Just people looking super sharp, these guys in these suits, and then they'll have like Chuck Taylors on or something like that. Yeah. But like the rest <laughs> of them is on point. I have seen so that a it, lot actually. If, if you wanna wear a hat, I'm cool with it, but you have to make sure that the rest of you is on point. So if you don't want to look 
like you don't care and you want to wear your baseball hat, then maybe wear something super nice with your baseball hat. I <clears throat> don't think I can top that. <laughs> she pretty much nailed it in. Well, what, what is your opinion? Would you wear a hat on a date? So here is the answer. Um, I, I'm, I'm in the middle, so this is appropriately rated. If you're going to a Cardinals game, yeah, so it's cool. Wear a hat, mm -hmm. right? Wear your Cardinals, whatever. If your if your first date is uh, at a restaurant, even if it's just sort of an average restaurant or a nice restaurant, the answer is no. Um. Okay, here's another. I'll go a step further. If you are, let's say that you you're kind of at the boyfriend girlfriend status, right? So you've been on many dates, maybe three months or something, whatever. And now you're meeting the parents for the first time. No, don't wear a hat. Yeah. You know, now if you're meeting the parents for the first time at a Cardinals game, it's probably okay. But I, but I will also say I'm going to take my hat off when I'm shaking the hands mm -hmm. of the father of this girl. And it's the first time I've ever met him. Cause it's just the respectful yeah. thing to do. Yeah. I think it's old school, but yeah. it, you know, I agree with that. I think that it it goes back to like a traditional like it's just kind of a respect thing mm -hmm. where especially if you're a man, it's just kind of tradition where you just take your hat off to shake mom and dad's hand or you know, you don't wear your hat in church, you know, those traditional yeah, values. Anthem, I definitely agree with the right. fact that me as a woman, I notice if the guy's like walking up to the restaurant with his hat and then he takes his hat off to meet me or something like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I don't care if you wear right a hat on a date, but if you show it. those little bits of respect, it makes yeah. it's it's those are brownie points. Many, many brownie points. Appropriately rated. Yes. All righty. <clears throat> so next topic. We're talking about a topic that uh, you're going to have to explain for me. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> relationship Hail Mary. Explain Hail it. Mary. Explain Full it. Full of grace. And uh, respond to it for me. All right. Do you know what a relationship Hail Mary is? No. Okay. So a relationship Hail Mary is where... <clears throat> Okay, it could, it could have a few definitions, but let me just kind of narrow it down to its its simplest. A relationship Hail Mary is, it's like, okay, I'm not sure where I stand with this person. I think I know, but I've been wrong, or I think I know, but I'm not sure. Maybe they don't know for sure where they stand with me. It's basically, it's it's not rocky ground, right? It's not shaky ground, it's just, it's just not sure ground so a relationship hail mary as i like to call it <laughs> i'm pretty sure i made this term up i because i don't know i didn't even bother googling it but as, as a lot of people know in football a hail mary is right you're down by one point you got you know 60 yards to go you're going to send all your receivers out the quarterback's just going to close his eyes he's going to throw the ball in the air and at that point, it's kind of up to God for the ball to land in a receiver's hands, run it to the end zone. Everybody's the hero of the game. All right. A relationship Hail Mary is just like that. It's where you call someone, you know, maybe text to, and you say, hey, look, I'm not really sure where we stand, but I really like you, and I'm just going to go for it. So here it is. This Saturday blah, 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 or Friday night, blah, 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 or I'm just going to be the one to be bold and do the bold thing, say the bold thing. And you know, I freaking love you or like, I don't know, maybe that's might be extreme under those circumstances, but you're just going to be really bold. You're going to throw the hail Mary. Okay. Requested no. or rejected. Requested or rejected. Thanks for doing my job for me. I think, <laughs> I think um, it would be, that's a complicated one, to be honest, because it, <laughs> like that, because that's, to me, that's the one that carries it over from dating to 
you know, maybe I want to be a little more. That's just how I would interpret that. If a guy came to me and was like, hey, or I don't know, it would just, it's so situational, you know? True like, that. like, did That's you guys you have, have a bad last just date? Just what I've given you. Yeah. Did you have a, but did you have like a bad last date that didn't end well and now you're trying to recover? Sure. Yeah. It could be recovery. Or have you been seeing other people and now you're doing the whole, okay, now I anything. just want to date you. I would request it then. Absolutely. hundred percent. I don't, yeah. Why not? Because if he's going to show or she's going to show that they want you that much, then heck yeah. Bring it. Okay. <laughs> I'm definitely a requested. Yeah. Every time. I love the underdog. I love it when the odds are stacked against. I thrive in that environment. Yeah. It's where I peak. What do you think, Ian? You were on a roll last week, man. Like, I just, I was just about ready to get up out of the chair and be like, you just take it from here, dude. Cause, like, technically two weeks ago. If, two, like, oh, all right, two weeks ago. Yeah. But you always have, like, the perfect thing to say. I, I think, I'm just over here slinging I mud. You, I think you guys nailed it. I mean, it's, it really has to do with the situation. And it also has to do with, like, first of all, you, you generally only throw a Hail Mary when it's literally the last option you have true that um so <laughs> well said. that's the only time you're ever going to do something like this and at that point it can only be requested because yeah. essentially you've got nothing to lose and you have nothing but gain from there so mm. you know it's literally the last seconds see if this works if not then you're done well in another in another aspect you have everything to lose why well, i mean if the ball Right, gets dropped, gets fumbled, doesn't get caught. It could take a situation that is otherwise, you know, maybe salvageable with time. But if you throw that pass, you know, once that ball leaves the, it's it's out there, right? Once that once the words leave the mouth. Well, mm -hmm. you don't. In my opinion, you don't have. Any, there's nothing you can lose at that point. And the reason is, is because either the relationship works out or it doesn't. Either way, you're still alive, hopefully. Hopefully the Hail Mary isn't <laughs> ending in that. But what I'm saying is, is there is no, like, it, the relationship is just over at that point and get on with your life. I mean, that's the way I would look True at that. it. So I don't really see it as something where you should be fearful at that point because that at that point you're at rock bottom you're at your wit's end and you need to just go for it and if it doesn't work out then try again next year you know that's my opinion i, I wonder how many people will direct message <laughs> and ask so have you ever thrown a hail mary <laughs> you'll probably get a lot of those i think i think the hail mary for me if i were to throw a hail mary I would throw that Hail Mary if I had my options on the table and I was ready to pick which one. I wanted to go the long haul because it's not just a perpetual cycle of dating. You're supposed to date to find your one person. So if you're going to throw that Hail Mary, regardless of what your last date went like or how long you've spoken, you're going to say you know, I dated this person, that person, and I just, it's you. That's my Hail Mary. And it's just taking that leap of faith and saying, we're going to keep going down this road, but now it's you and me mm. and not you and me and this dating pool, you know? So it's, it's it either be, a Hail Mary either becomes the greatest story in history or it becomes like a, just another loss. Yeah. So like there's, there's oh, huge so game. True. And yep. like, first of all, any game we're talking football here. So any game that someone threw a hail Mary in the last second and it didn't get caught. I mean, 
it's just another loss. It's just another thing in the, the loss column. No one cares about that. No one talks about it years later. They do talk about it when it is caught. So true, you really true, don't have true. a lot to lose. It's yeah. it's already gone. It's already gone. You're just trying to. <laughs> you know what it, it is? It's it's Karate Kid One. <laughs> Remember the kick? Yeah. Yep. That's the Hail Mary. Yep. He either gonna it's hit that, it. It's it's or either not. yeah. It's either Olympic gold medal or you're forgotten. Yep. And yeah. I, and honestly, that's okay. Yeah, because, it is okay. I it's mean, totally okay. It's just another relationship at that point, and kind of just move on at that point. So yeah. yeah. All right, like let's it. talk about. Get us another one. We're going to talk about Snapchat and or any like photo messaging as a replacement for phone calls and or written messages. So communication with your significant other through photo. <sighs> sharing photo messaging uh, instead of communicating with them through texting or phone calls <laughs> <laughs> you go first uh, me you want me to yes. go first <laughs> um okay so i do have snapchat on my phone um I have only ever used it with two people, one being uh, one of my children and one being with someone um, I have dated. Uh, the filters were fun. Um, I never quite figured out all of the, you know, like it disappears or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a requested. I thought it was cool. I liked it. Yeah. I would say requested as well. I think it's fun. It makes me laugh. It's not a reason to not call the person you're hanging out with, dating your spouse, whatever, but it's it's a fun addition to the relationship because yeah. you can be at the grocery store and like, hey, what are we cooking for dinner tonight? And you can make it funny and you can be together when sure. you're not together. And if you guys yeah. like each other enough, then that's amazing. Absolutely requested. If they're annoying, then rejected and maybe you shouldn't be hanging out with them. <laughs> Bada bing. I guess the real question is like, do you prefer one communication method over the other? And does one cause more issues than the other? That's the real question we're trying to get in. <clears throat> well, so gotcha. let's 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 be real. Let's have some real talk about this this topic. Snapchat allows you to send content that will dissipate. Mm -hmm. in some amount of time. I don't know how that's all works, but it'll dissipate. Um, like what is it an hour or after a couple plays or one play or after you 24? watch it the first time it's okay. gone if you don't yeah. save it. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think what it can do good or bad is it can free someone to send a message, uh, a picture, a video, or whatever that they would maybe not otherwise do through a more permanent platform, like just regular SMS messaging. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have a preference between communication. I think I just go with the flow super important stuff obviously needs to be communicated like if we're confirming a date or we're confirming a time or whatever please call me or send me something more permanent for sure so but snapchat, if we're just goofing off and you're at the grocery store yeah. again or wherever so snapchat's for fun and work, flirting right, right? And, and you're at work and you like there's something that makes you think of your partner or the person you're dating or your friend and you just snap them real quick that's what it's for right. 
It's not, it's not a means of communication. And I would much rather have a phone call than anything else. I'm not the best at making phone calls, but that's what I would want yeah, more agreed. than anything. If you want to communicate with me about something, get me on the phone and let's just. I'm still requested. Yeah. It just, you know, there is a platform, right? Right. Certain types of yeah. social media serve a certain right purpose, just like certain types of messaging mm -hmm. serve a certain yeah. purpose. I think Snapchat could be like wonderful if it's used for fun. Yeah. Yeah. But not a means of communication, communication. If that makes sense. Exactly. Okay. All right. So let's get into some of our main topics for today's podcast. So first topic rotational dating aka the man funnel <laughs> i don't know what this means so i'm gonna have you explain this okay have you heard of this nope no okay so just to be clear here for our audience um you are a single woman because everybody that i have on the show is single um you are you represent the younger dating uh, age, right? So that this audience is pretty much between thirty and sixty, and um, and and I would say the sweet spot's probably forties, right? Because it's in the middle. Mm -hmm. But you're on the you're I'm on thirty two. There you go. In case I, you I was wondering. I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. So you're thirty two. I just turned thirty two years old. So for. Uh, people, well, in this specific case, because this was a topic that was brought up um, uh, through direct messaging this past week, somebody brought up the idea of the man funnel, or what's what's it called again? Rotation, rotational dating. Okay, so that was brought up from a uh, a woman, and the same thing applies for men. You know, rotational dating, like if you're in a certain community. Right, like we're in a big community here, but that kind of you know, there are circles, right? So we're in a small community here, and you know, people know people, and it kind of goes through this rotation. And this actually became something uh, that I became very familiar with through another online group that I am a member of called DO40 which stands for divorced over 40. Uh, it's out of Oklahoma. It has over a thousand followers and they do monthly groups. They have a big spring fling coming up with like several hundred people like this hotel takeover. And they're, yeah, it's like, imagine a, a hotel full of a bunch of single people that are 40 plus. Right. Like it, I wish I could go, I can't make it, but next time I'm gonna try to make it, it sounds like a lot of fun. But the topic was brought up that, you know, you know, this guy dates this girl and then, you know, whatever. And then he dates this girl and this girl dates that guy. Right. It's like this mm. that I would call it more like recycling. OK, yeah. so I think I've explained it enough. People get the idea. So <clears throat> what do you think? Like the same is true on dating apps. Right, if you're on a dating app, you know, Match, Tinder, or whatever, uh, Bumble, and you're in an area like we're in, St. Louis or Wentzville or St. Charles or right some of the suburbs, you're going to see the same people pop up. Yeah. Does that mean you're going to go on a date with them multiple times, or like you're talking with your buddies about how you're dating the same girl, or you're talking with your girls about how you're dating the same? guy like what yeah that's that's the dilemma and is it like i'm your friend we're friends and we're dating the same girl or i you know like what is the i would have to understand that more well that is the dilemma okay so think of it like um a spider web yeah right so the spider web is you know you can say it's based upon a zip code or a certain geographic area whether it's all of los angeles you know all of uh stuttgart germany whatever 
or maybe it's like where we are in the Midwest and it's a little bitty community of, you know, 20,000 people or maybe a a hundred thousand people. Well, sooner or later, you know, as you're traveling this web, you know, you're going to see the boundaries. Right. And unless you Um, are willing to go outside those boundaries, which basically means to date in other cities, you know. Yeah. You're, it's the funnel. And let's be real. For someone like you, Mm -hmm. right, which is to say somebody like me or this single woman or this single man, right, if if there's 100 people, oh, boy, here we go. You know, I love numbers. Mm -hmm. And let's say there's 100 people. Call it a thousand people, or call it ten thousand people. Based upon your criteria, there's only going to be a certain percentage that are even going to fall into your funnel. Yeah. I, I think if you're being generous, you're going to say twenty percent, and if you're someone, <laughs> well, if you're somebody who's twice divorced, over forty, blah 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 blah, that funnel is like five percent okay i think i understand so your five percent pool okay i don't so out of 100 people you have five opportunities right and everybody in your demographic also has five opportunities likely well, the same a, like the, my demographic i'm sorry like the demographic <laughs> you were describing i'm That's sorry i'm did. just like hey no the demographic you just described twice divorced in your 40s over yeah, 40 that's a demographic all yeah, that stuff that's so one of that particular demographic also has a five percent chance is that with like likely the same five yep. people okay I think I'm not in the right pool to answer that question because what happens to me is I get too many options. I have too many, not not enough, if that makes sense. So my I don't recycle. I fend off. <laughs> <laughs> True that. That's my answer. That's what I got. <laughs> Well, that's what I mean. If your pool, okay, let's let's use some realistic numbers. Mm-hmm. It's not ten thousand, but it's not it's not a hundred. Let's say it's a thousand. Okay. Whether you're thirty two, forty two, fifty two, sixty two, whatever. Let's say you got a thousand in your socio economic and geographic area. So out of a thousand, would you say you have five percent? Oh yeah to that you would you would be like yeah uh, this is in my funnel mm-hmm. yeah easily okay yeah me too i There's would say five percent another 95 percent not in my funnel <laughs> so how are you feeling when you just got out of a relationship with jimmy and now jimmy's dating a girl you know from work oh. and then a girl you know from work Oh, this is going to go into our next topic. Her friend was dating <laughs> Jimmy's friend. Yep. And then this is the point. Okay, so I okay. <clears throat> I, let me tell you something. That's a I, tough one. Like I hate to say this, but and and never say never. I am currently not dating anymore anybody from my area and by my area I mean all of St. Louis which is three and a half million people jeez I'm not doing it I'm done no more yeah well that's the case of too many options yes you're a catch well I, not for that reason um, that's very generous of you thank you um, it's just that it's the web is too small yeah it's just too small. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a hard topic because I haven't had enough experience in dating to experience like, or like, excuse me, the most recent experience I've had with that and probably the most valid one was I cut ties with dating a certain person and then I was 
relatively immediately asked by a mutual friend to go out on a date. And I was uncomfortable with that situation. That's exactly my point. Yeah. And it was because it was fresh and because I still, like, I just wasn't ready to go down that road. But it was surprising to me how, like, oh, she's free now. I'm going to go in and I'm going to get her. You know, (laughs) I'm going to ask for, I'm going to ask her on a date. It's my turn. And it's just like they're waiting, you know, like, I'm just waiting for the green light. I'm waiting for the the right time. Everybody's, everybody's in line waiting for their turn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm sorry it took me a minute to wrap my brain around that yeah. one, but it that was a little complicated. But yeah, that totally yeah. makes sense now that I can identify an experience I've had with that. For sure. For me, it made me uncomfortable. But if more time had passed, then sure. And I think that men and women need to have more tact in that sense. How much time? Right, so you're in a social circle. Not to put you on the spot, but you're in a social circle. Like, this is very relative. This this actually has come up with more than one person who has messaged me. You're, right, so you're dating someone, you know, maybe it's serious, maybe it's not. Maybe you're just dating. But, but you know, you're kind of dating exclusively, whether you've talked about it or not. Um, and you know that just because you have truly filled each other's time with each other, like, all the time. So, um Right. There's an ending. And now how much time? Right. It's not it's it's not a week. Uh, I don't know. It's not a year. Mm -hmm. What is it? Hold on. I'm going to think of a number. Okay, I got it. I wouldn't personally put a number on it. I (laughs) I work. I work off of my intuition and my M. Empathy, you know my empathy. Well, then I'm not going to put a number on it either because I don't want to be held accountable to it. <laughs> I think I think that if, as a woman, if I'm eyeing a man and I know that he is dating somebody else, hmm. and if I like him enough and I'm paying attention, I'm going to know when he's, or I'm going to have an idea of when he's available, and then I'm going to dip my feet in the water, and I'm going to really feel out the situation, and I on my own intuitive level i'm gonna know when the right time is to ask and if it is a no the first time it doesn't mean don't ask again it just means like okay maybe this was a little too soon for comfort and then you can kind of gauge but you can't really gauge until you try you know so maybe for someone it's two weeks maybe somebody needs a month to get over the last one maybe for somebody they can bounce back the very next day you know they're just like oh well we're not dating anymore (laughs) on to the next one thank you next you know everybody has their cup of tea my cup of tea is probably about give me like give me like a quarter of what the relationship was so if we were (gasps) dating for like six months that's so smart you know maybe give me a month and a half two months to get over that I am with you. Uh, Yeah. Oh, okay. So I will say, I was going to say, I was kind of saying, thinking six months Mm -hmm. would equal two months, right? For the Mm -hmm. circle to be like, you know, give her a minute. Yeah. And, and you actually gave it a a model, Mm -hmm. right? One, a quarter, right? Quarter, third, whatever. So yeah, I'm right there with you. Interesting. Hmm. Yep. But right. don't just jump right on me. <laughs> if you jump right on me, it's an immediate no. If you like it, it's yours. You're going to have to wait a couple more weeks, a couple more months to ask me again. So just. Yeah. Know. Oh, we could really go with that one. All right. What's next? So I want to throw a little different spin on this. So there's stories that you read about or that are just crazy enough to be told where couple moves in right next door to the other couple they become best friends and then in two years oh and by the way they both have kids and then in two years both couples get divorced and then they get married to the other person (laughs) like 
I, I, they were I've, in a relationship the whole time. Yeah, we're hearing this is like a TLC drama story. This is something there's, that this is what TMZ talks about. So, and there's there's a name for that. It's it's called wife swapping. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways. So what about that? So we're talking about a very small pool within that. Is this a is this normal to you, or do you guys how, how do you guys when you hear a story like that? What's your initial reaction? <clears throat> Are you in the heck yes? Just do do what you want, or do you think that's completely wrong? I have to let the lady go first on this. I have an initial reaction. I'm just gonna run with it. My initial reaction is that <sighs> the BFFs that live next door were in a relationship the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that's infidelity. And if if the married couple if the that's married exactly couple was mutually unhappy and it was a mutual thing, then that's wife swapping. If it's different, then that's emotional infidelity. That is a thing. Emotional cheating exists. Mm. And that's just where I'm coming from with it. So if you live right next door to somebody and you're in an unhappy relationship, then that's just knocking for opportunity to fill a void, you know? And then of course it can turn into something more, but because you're right next door, you're accessible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, you're willing, you're able. <clears throat> yeah. And I think and do you move in next door <laughs> with them after like how does that work do you buy a new house or do you continue living next door let's just take you know? the adults out of the relation the the equation and let's just talk about how screwed up that is to your kids super just screwed up like that's that <laughs> like, like I, you're not really causing that much emotional trauma to each other yeah. think about what your kids are going through at that point i think that's I I can't understand or like relate in any way to a situation like that. So that's my I think, opinion. I think it's got to be confusing, but there has to be more context with what's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's super jacked up for the kids because now you have to move. You know, what do you do after you divorce yeah. your spouse and and marry the person next door that is definitely so i i am definitely going to do my best to bring some clarity on this topic um whether the spouse comma spouses uh grant permission to their spouse for this behavior or if one spouse engages with the other spouse without the other spouse's knowledge i feel like i need a flow chart here um it doesn't really matter it, it is absolutely infidelity um and you you can you can look at that as a legal term you can look at that as a biblical term i it doesn't matter it's infidelity plain and simple and whether you have permission to do that or don't have permission to do that it's going to f up yep period a home wrecker and energy. a home wrecker is like the softest term you could use um <clears throat> and you know, don't get me wrong, right? Anything that's super fun or exciting, you know, it, it can be that way for a short term. But, you know, if you really look at it over the long haul, it's it's just a super, super bad idea. So, um, and then to your point, both of y'all actually, when you look at the implications of <laughs> divorce, <laughs> You know, splitting assets, you know, you you got a couple hundred thousand in your 401. I mean, basically, you just went to the casino and rolled the dice on half of that and you lost. It's gone. Oh, yeah. A couple hundred. How about how about a couple million? Maybe that's your number. 
maybe that's what you got and you're only going to get half of that i mean i could go on and on but it's it's bad juju it's a bad idea don't recommend it uh what is what is it gary v hey i'm gonna have a gary v the juice ain't worth the squeeze it's not Mm-mm. rejected rejected so let's <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about relationship contracts and what I mean, mm. not not an official contract, but I'm talking about terms of the relationship. So, for example, you have a open, contractual-sounding talk with the person you're dating about what is and is not expected from each of you, and interesting, etc. Who do we want to be in this relationship, hon? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I haven't thought about it, dear. Who do you want to be in this relationship? Oh, my goodness. Well, (laughs) I'm talking a little bit more along the terms of like, um, you know, we agree to spend this amount of time with each other and we agree to, you know, uh, know, blend families. We're agreeing to... um, creating a an environment that looks like x y and z but so most relationships don't sit down and describe out a contract of what we're what, what's this gonna look like it just naturally happens but how would you feel if somebody asked you those questions or wanted to create a uh, a contractual agreement to your relationship Fifty Shades of Grey, much? Um, that uh, <laughs> okay? Yeah. That's what that I, is. I didn't is. even think. I didn't even think of that. But like, that's yeah, exactly. I, he, well, I, you know he, what? I'll go first. I'm a hundred percent on board. Uh, yeah, I I'm a hundred percent on board. I think that in the right relationship, dating relationship, that makes a hundred percent sense. And I think that if you have, okay, I'll try not to go on a tangent, but I'm coming from being a single woman. To being a single mom my daughter's two years old so my what would have been contractual agreements for me two years ago are completely different different. i wouldn't have given a two years ago about a contractual relationship and i'm not asking anybody to sign anything or anything like that but there are standards boundaries and agreements that have to be made and that's the kind of new territory I'm getting into as a single mom in mm-hmm. the dating pool is, yes, if you're the man I'm dating, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. And if I decide to go on a second or third date, then I'm going to have some standards that I need to know that you can abide by. My daughter needs to be safe. I don't have all the time in the universe, but the time I do dedicate to you is for you and that segues into one of my dating pet peeves which i think we'll talk about later Mm -hmm. um but i'm all for it because i'm a single mom so i have to have that agreement you know like my time is my time i work i do therapy with my daughter i do this that and the other thing i need you to be on time I need you to let me know in advance what our plans are. You know, I need you to be aware that if you invite me to a family gathering, my daughter is going to come with me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm... I think what we're talking about is boundaries. Like setting, like having the conversation that like, hey, I have two children, so 70% of my time is going to be allocated to them and their Mm -hmm. needs. And the other 50, you know, 20, 30 yeah. percent is split between you, work and yeah. other things. And do you agree to that or 100 percent? Yeah, I agree to that because I only have a percentage of time to give to a percentage of my life. Yeah. And that's just how my life is. You know, my my challenge on this topic is. <clears throat> It's different than yours, Mm -hmm. but, you know, challenge nonetheless. Um, When you're a business owner, your your business is a child. 
it has to be attended to. And when you add to that, you, that you also have children, you know, it's like having children from two different marriages, (laughs) you know, because it, they come with their own complexities and exactly to your point is, you know, when I say I'm going to, you know, take you out or I'm going to pick you up or we're going to meet somewhere or whatever. And it's in my, like, like it's actually in my calendar. And when is in my calendar, it happens and it happens from this exact time to this exact time. And that's it. Yeah. So, um, you know, and then added to that, you know, one of the things that's different about you and I is that you have your children full time. Your, I'm sorry, your your daughter full time, and I have my daughter half the time. Um, but sometimes I even have them on days or weeks that I I don't necessarily have to have them. So it's really like it is truly, 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 truly hard for me to give myself personally, not business, but personally to someone for dating on the weeks that I have my kiddos because I'm all between kiddos and business and squeezing in workouts in the morning. I'm like, I'm done. Like my day starts from sun up and it doesn't end until 10 PM. Yeah. Seven days. That's where dating can kind of turn into a little bit of a job interview. Like I've talked to a, a, a gentleman who, said that he he said dating to me is like an interview I go and I interview them and I tell them about you know my life my standards my goals my schedule all that stuff and then if they can't meet my criteria then it's just it's just I can't waste my time I have no time to waste and I think you've talked about that yeah on here and I think that the contractual element of dating for people in this age bracket with kids and stuff is super important it sounds very robotic and kind of transactional transactional but at the same time it's necessary Mm -hmm. you know because if you were to just sit down and say this is my life every other week i have my kids i'm not going to be able to devote quite as much time to you every other week that i have my kids Mm -hmm. but on the weeks that i don't it's me and you baby let's go yeah and you know i'll take you here we'll do that we'll do this this is how much time i can you know and if she can agree or he can agree to that criteria then it's on Mm -hmm. but if they can't agree to that then maybe you save yourselves a lot of wasted time that you don't have to waste and you say well i can't meet your i can't do that so you know, on one of the thing. five love languages <laughs> is quality time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I referenced this group earlier um, out of Oklahoma uh, called DO40, Divorced Over 40. And I would challenge that name to, uh, I, although I think it's a great name, um, and I love being part of that group. I'm on there every day. Um, <clears throat> I would go a step further and, and say, there are two types of singles. There are singles with children and there are singles without children. And singles without children is like game on. Yeah. Anything goes, anytime, any day. But when you have when you have kids, that's a different ball game. Yeah. And um, quality time uh, between two single people when there are children with one of them or a lot of times, honestly, most likely, cause right. It's, it's just, it's a, it's an attraction thing when there's children between the two of them, that quality time. I mean, think about, so let me ask you quality time between two single people that have right children when they can actually get together. I'm going to say it's 10 times. 10x yeah the quality time then like when you're just young super young without kids and yeah so you, you agree yeah 
hundred percent. You make it worth it. You know, mm. I know what it's like to wait a week and a half to go on a date two weeks, you yeah. know, to go on a date and you're waiting for that specific, you know, that specific time and day and you're thinking about it for 10 days straight and it's all you can think about. And heck yeah, it's going to be the most phenomenal five or six hours of your night, of your day, you know, your week, your month, whatever, <laughs> your month. whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever. your month. And, and then it's on to the next month. But that's why like that contractual transactional element but the key is not thinking about it that way you know like yeah you have to schedule it in but it's not but once you got it scheduled right you can move on to that's like you know, the one thing on your calendar you keep tell me you keep scrolling back to that day yeah i know i got my date on thursday yeah i'm just gonna scroll back and remind myself what time <laughs> it is yeah. You know, I can't I like remember, that. was it that. at five o'clock or was it five thirty? Let me go check. And then you just see her name in your calendar. That's so awesome. And you're just looking forward to it for days on end. And mm. you scheduled that transactionally a week and a half ago. I'm totally on two the same page ago. with you. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's talk about what you uh, alluded to earlier as one of your pet peeves in dating, because this kind of just, it segues <laughs> perfectly, uh, knowing when to say when. Um, okay, so I, I called this piece knowing when to say when, right. but I, would you explain it, please, so that people get it? Segwaying from the the whole contractual transactional thing. Um, my time is highly valuable. I work on the days that I don't work. I have appointments to meet for my daughter. I have to do all my own everything, grocery shopping, chores, baby care, all that stuff. It's all on me 100% of the time if I'm not working. So, and like I calculate my days down to the minute that I have to leave the house and I know how much time I have in any given moment. So if I'm going out on a date with you, particularly a breakfast date or a lunch date, it's likely that I don't have the rest of the day to waste and that I'm making this time for you in this hour and a half please be on time because mm -hmm. I have to go to work or I have to go make an appointment for my daughter or I have to go do this, that, or the other thing. So every minute counts. And like, I can give you a grace period of maybe five minutes or whatever. Or if you're going to be running late, just give me a heads up, a text, a phone call because those 15 minutes can mean the difference between, you know, being able to do a little something extra for myself. Or being able to stop at the gas station and get gas so I don't have to do it tomorrow before work or whatever. And it's stupid and it's petty and it's small. But if you're going to be late, just don't be late. Yeah. <laughs> or let me know at least because I can make, I'm a miracle worker. I can make something happen in that 15 minutes that you're running behind. I can throw my laundry in the washer. So it actually reminds me of a story that happened to me last summer and in fact your point is so valid to me this story actually made it into my book Wow! I have 16 personal stories in my book and this is a fragment of one of those <clears throat> so um, there was a gal that I must say I was super, super duper excited to meet for the first time. We had a date set up for Saturday, uh, at noon mm -hmm. and I'm going to keep this short. I got stood up. <laughs> Bobby got stood up. Oh. Surprising. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, that's not the only time it's ever happened. Um, yeah, I got stood up. And um, here's the thing that was the most frustrating about that to your point. I'm a pretty self-confident guy, and I know that in the dating pool, I'm going to be interviewing and be interviewed by people that aren't always at my level, or they just got other stuff going. People got, you know, people got shit going on in their life. I get it. It's fine. Um, I don't think there's any excuse for standing somebody up, but it does happen. And the thing that frustrated me more than anything was if that gal knew what I had to do mm-hmm. exactly. to show up at a place at noon on a Saturday. I don't know. Maybe she's watching this. So if you're watching this, let me just tell you what I had to do. I had to move my Saturday morning appointments to Sunday or get them earlier on Friday because I'm a real estate agent. I work the weekends. Um, I had to get a sitter and because I was super excited about meeting this gal to your point, I thought this was going to be one of those five hour dates. Yeah. So guess what? I got a five hour babysitter, not a two hour babysitter. Those are different people in my black book Mm -hmm. for babysitters. And and anyways, on and on and I could go, but here's, here's how crazy this was. We were supposed to meet at noon. It honestly, Ian, it didn't even hit me. Did not even hit me until like 15, 20 minutes after noon. Like I'm standing in front of the restaurant in Kirkwood and I'm like, I'm getting stood up. <laughs> like, yeah. So the point is, um, you know, if you're a single person without children, you've never been married, never been divorced, you don't, and you're dating or you want to date someone like us where we have kids, just know we don't just take a request and say yes and put it in our calendar and show up. <clears throat> right. And it's not yeah. just a woman thing, it's a man thing too. Yeah. Right. I have my kids a lot. Yeah. So, anyways. I think and, I just and, vented. And Thank you. That's I that's, feel better. <laughs> <laughs> that's Cheers. the thing too is you just you just personified like exactly how it should be from from my perspective. You should be so eager to go on a date with me that you will move all your stuff. You will jump through hoops just like I am because I'm eager to come on a date with you. I'm not gonna freaking be late unless there was an emergency. I'm not going to show up looking like junk. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm going to show I've up that happen, looking though. my best. I'm going to be early. And I'm going to be waiting for you. You're going to walk you're through that door and you're going to see me at the table. And you're going to say, that's my lady. Mm-hmm. I know it. And you're going to be five minutes early for me. And I'm going to be. You want to know something on that note? <clears throat> just sidebar real quick. Woman, man, I'm just going to have a, a man comment. I went on a number of dates in 2020, uh, mostly last summer. And I'm going to say Oh, I'm almost afraid to say the number. I'm going to say somewhere between six and eight out of 50. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> Do you want me to cringe? Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say you. six to eight out of 50. I could actually meet this person or walk up to this person or walk into a, a public place where this person is and go yes <laughs> yes like that's my date yep 
if what's you that wanna, what is that as a percentage <clears throat> but oh it's uh it's less than 20 percent yeah out of 50 yeah yeah yeah, if you're going to be going on a date with somebody and you're in it to win it and keep them, they better be able to spot you having no idea who you even are. Yeah. Like, blind date status, that's my girl, yeah. that's my guy, that's how eager you need to be. Be on time, be early, impress me. We're so on the same page. <laughs> so, so on the same page. We just if talked about that. Hey, you know, this is called mm -hmm. curb appeal. I, this is in my book. It's called dating curb appeal. Yep. It's a new it's a new phrase I coined. So we just talked about the beginning of the date. Let's talk about the end of the date when they want to stick around for another hour. Would you like you know hmm. I I booked from five to nine because I need to be home to put my child to bed at ten ten thirty, but you want to have another drink or you want to go to a different bar. Or you want to go bowling now. And you know to extend the date so I usually have the foresight to know if it's gonna go longer and it depends on how I feel if I'm super mega excited and I have no reservations and I'm not nervous and I'm just excited and I ask my sitter to sit you know for X amount of hours I will book an extra hour on my own accord or an extra two or whatever, just in case. And if I don't utilize that, then I'll go pick her up early. I'll save the money. If I don't utilize it, I can go take myself out for a drink, whatever. But I'll always book the extra time because just in case we hit it off, I don't want to have to go home gritting my teeth, wishing for more. <clears throat> But if I got to go, I got to go. And you got to respect that. Yeah. So here, okay, we're very similar. There are <clears throat> times when I've gone on a date and I've said to someone, um, and, and I'm okay with, with justifying it, um, I will say to them, hey, um, I'm going to meet you at 1 o'clock. Um, but I definitely have to be wrapped up by three o'clock because I have to pick up my kids from school. I have to make sure my daughter gets home or now if it's a Friday night or a Saturday night, um, like let's be real. Okay. Uh, only speaking for me, if I'm going to take you on a date, you know, I'm going to pick you up or we're going to meet or whatever at five, six, seven o'clock on a Friday or Saturday night, right? Date night. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I need to be home by nine. Like, I'm not even a chick. And even I know if I'm on a first date with someone on a Friday or Saturday night and they're like, I got to be home by nine, that dude's a f player. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, right? got to be home by nine. What, do you, was that how you would feel? It would depend on the situation. If he had kids or like. Oh, it would have to be really good. You know, but. No, the kid thing. I gotta I be get. home by nine. I'm the kid sorry. Thing I get. But if you have to be up at five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, and that's your excuse, I have to wake up early. Then, I don't know. I might be like thinking in my head, I would stay up late for you. <laughs> Why won't you stay up too. late for me? You know, and it's just that. How excited am I about you? I want you to be that excited about me. Yeah. So if I have to wake up at six in the morning, but I'm willing to stay out till midnight with you, I want you to feel the same about me. Okay. So, but I'll see, agree but, with you but, as but, an individual case basis. But see, mm -hmm. that's a valid. So that excuse is actually valid to me. Like I, I think sleep to certain people is valuable. Like mm -hmm. for example, um, like a construction worker who has to be up on the job site at 4 a.m. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, that's, oh, yeah. I respect that. Or yeah. someone who is training for a bodybuilding competition. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Been there, done that. Like, yeah. 
Sleep, but here's the sleep thing. Sleep is way more important. If somebody mm-hmm. has to be home by 9 p.m., they shouldn't be asking you out on a date at 7 p.m. They should yeah. be asking you out at like 5 p.m. That's what I'm saying. I'm just it's saying. like I know that every if Saturday. If it's a Friday or Saturday night. Every Saturday morning, I have to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, which means I have to wake up really early. So I'm not going to go out on a late date on a Friday. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go out for breakfast or lunch on a Friday. And I'm, not, I'm just not going to put myself in that situation, you know. But I definitely value other people's time and everything. So if that's yeah. what they need to do, I wouldn't necessarily think there's something else going on. But I would respect their time for sure. Okay, I want to talk topic. about. I want to talk about one more topic. Okay. So th- this is my description, um, but we're going to title this bringing friends into the relationship and what i mean by this is i have seen this across so many relationships i've seen this played out in my own in some ways but the friend giving advice on the relationship that honestly isn't warranted and or needed um Mm. you know bringing a friend in you know for example girl goes out on a date And then she comes home and tells her friend all about it. And then her friend basically tells her, this is the most awful human being in the world. You deserve better. But in reality, like the guy's a genuine good guy who uh, really likes her. But because of the way her friend talks about this guy, she's going to just break it off and never talk to him again. So that's the topic we're talking about. I'm going to let you take this one. (laughs) Will you? I have very strong opinions on this topic, in fact. In fact, my opinions are so strong, I wrote a book. (laughs) And in this book, uh, it is uh, discussed. So I view what happens on a date or in dating is I call it IP intellectual property and and don't get me wrong when you when you have your BFF you know and if you're BFF like you have one not five right it's not a group thing it's sure as hell not a group chat um you know, or maybe your BFF is one of your parents, or maybe your BFF is your therapist or whatever. I get that. I think everyone's allowed one. But what happens between two people is their property. It's intellectual property. <clears throat> and... um when you share that intellectual property, right? It's so funny because everything we're talking about tonight is like very transactional. We're talking about contracts. We're talking about very specific times and an event, which is really weird because you and I, like this is not our brain. You and I are very artsy and, mm-hmm. you know, very left. And now don't get me I'm wrong. I'm very I love, against, like, tr- I'm very against transactional. Like, yeah. that's just not my jam. I'm very spontaneous fun loving so the transaction mm-hmm. actually i resist it but yeah. it's necessary and and anyway. yet here are these topics tonight it's right. so weird so um i know this isn't a requested or rejected but not only am i a rejected i am violently rejected to outside opinions about uh matters of the heart between two people um, in a dating relationship. Now, let me back up, right? So now we're back to where, right? The, the, the dog's chasing the tail here. When we're talking about the funnel and if, so if you're my dear friend, like truly, maybe I'm not your best friend, but you're, you're truly a dear friend. And, or maybe even a coworker, right? We've, we work together and I know you're going to, you've gone out with, what did you say earlier? J- 
John, Jim, Jimmy, Johnny. Jimmy or yeah. Johnny. Jimmy, and, uh, Johnny. Jimmy, John. <laughs> Freaky fast. <laughs> That's a whole other topic. <laughs> So, well, I mean, if he is freaky fast, I mean, I, I don't know if he's the maybe that's the issue. Maybe that's what we need to talk about. Okay, we digress. So, and I come to you and I could be like, hey, look, I know I'm not your best friend, but I know that around the water cooler, around the funnel, the rotation that you're going to, you've gone out with Jimmy or you've gone out with you know, a few times. And I just want you to know my experience has been, you know, now if it's, here's the thing, if it's gossipy and catty, like seriously, dude, I'm at a point in my life where I will just look at that person and I will say, you know what? Thanks. And I don't give a shit. Like I, I have said that to people. Like I actually have said to people, you know how people say, that sometimes you let people off the elevator. Ding! I'm letting you off. I have. I have actually said that to people. <laughs> I'm just that guy. Like, I, I love you, but, but you did me wrong. So now you're off. Yeah. I'm just, I want to invite you to find a different opportunity. So, sorry, I know you're, you want me to move on here. So, um, it's not welcome. It's not necessary. I am a mature 45 year old man. Who's not perfect, but I have a brain on my head, you know, our brain in my head and, and I can make my own choices. And now if yeah. somebody comes to me and says, Hey, I want you to know that here, uh, Jimmy John has three cases of right. Whatever on case net. Um, mm, just want you to know. Well, then the, maybe that's different. Yeah. <clears throat> that, yes. Weigh in on all if that, they're, Mo. If, they, if, they've, <laughs> if they're trying to, you know, and they just stumbled upon some information that you might want to know, then absolutely. But I have people in my life in particular who want to know my business, and I resist letting them know my business because I am a private person. And if I want to share my business with you, I will. And if I want your input, I will ask you for it. I don't need your unsolicited advice. So as far, and as far as friends' input on my relationship or family's input on my relationship, I avoid it at all costs because they're not me and they don't know the daily experience that I go through with an individual. They don't know the conversations that we've had. <clears throat> and they might just, you know, and you have to be careful even venting, you know, to your friends and loved ones because they're always going to have your back if they're a good friend or loved one. So you might just be having a bad day and like this piece of crap, blah, 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 and he did this and he was late and I was late and then I was like, you son of a bitch, you know, <laughs> F you. Right. And you just needed to vent to that one friend, but then he or she takes that as, you know, F that guy and you should dump him, blah, blah, blah. And it's just a recipe for confusion and yeah. you should really keep your emotions to yourself. And if you're, if, if. As a friend, if somebody is expressing to you their relationship failures or whatever, you should be a wise enough friend to not try to give them advice and just give them support. You know, so if anybody's trying to tell me who I should and should not date, I'm, I just tune out. I'm not listening anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Rejected. You can tell me how you feel but I'm not listening. <laughs> so I think for me, it gets worse as you get older. I think the well, I can imagine of, of this topic comes down to <clears throat> which relationship are you really in? Because a lot of times there's a best friend who is your real relationship. Let's be honest. There's, there's, mm -hmm. there's women and men who have their best friend and, Although it's not a real, like, dating relationship, in reality, like, you're each other's, like, 
best person and stuff. So those are where the real issues lie is that when that you have that best friend who then becomes, uh, you know, an ear in the, you know, basically you're adding a secondary, like almost dating like relationship on top of it. And that's where the confusion becomes because are you really invested in your friend or are you really invested in this new potential life Why partner? can't you be both? Why you can't should you do be both? able to be both. You can be a parent. You can be a business owner. You can be a Christian. You can be so many things and you can do them all. Why can't you be a best friend and a partner? Regardless of the sexes, it doesn't matter, in my opinion. Agreed. I, I, I mean, that's, we're talking ideal yeah. world there, but Especially I, I just know that you, there's people that are, frankly, just bad for, uh, like, there, mm-hmm. someone, you have a friend who's actually bad for your relationships in your dating life mm-hmm. because of the negative and bad oh. advice that mm-hmm. they give you. Negative That's, people. Yeah. You know, they, they're, they're really a drain, even though you think they're your best friend. You know, you tell them everything. It's great. You know, if that's the relationship that you want, then fine. But they're probably creating a negative uh, funnel mm-hmm. or they're creating a negative draw from you being potentially someone that it can stick around in a relationship. Yeah. <clears throat> There's I, I can't be around it. It's poisonous to me. Yeah. I, I won't be. I can't be around it. There's a song. I forget who it's by. But it's called Better Not. And it was introduced to me by my Spotify. And it sounds to me like this is what I would want my best friend to be to me. And she's singing this song. And she's saying, girl, you're in love. I got to tell you right now, you're in love. It's He's better than anybody you've ever found before. She's not giving her the bad advice. She's giving her the good advice. And so mm. your best friend, a lack of good advice can be considered advice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't even have to say, oh, don't date that guy. Don't date that girl. Don't go down that road, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to be that person. Your lack of good advice can be taken that way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Very valid. But if you're like, oh, girl, you got to go. You got to go on another date. You got to freaking get this guy. He's the one. Then you should trust her enough to listen or him enough or whoever. That's what friendship is, and that's where the balance is between a, f- a best friendship and your relationship with your spouse mm. or your future spouse or whatever. Mm-hmm. You can have both, and each has a role to play. Yeah. But if I don't approve of my friend's partner, I'm just, I'm going to, you know, she'll be like, oh, he was so funny because he said this thing, and I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> okay honey sure but if she's you know if i see the light in her eyes i can i'm her best friend enough to know like that's it like go on another date you know like this is your guy move forward and i would hope that that would be taken well agreed Okay, well, I think that's a great place to leave our conversation today. So take us home. All right, so I do have one last question for you. Okay. How would... Because I actually get asked this, and and so... you, You ever notice how when somebody asks you a question... They ask you a question because they want to be asked that question. Yeah. It's just, it's this weird human dynamic. Social psychology. Yes. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Absolutely. So my question to you is, um, cause you're on the younger end, mm-hmm. right? Of our viewing audience. Mm-hmm. And when a man 
asks you out. Mm-hmm. Organic. I'm not talking, let's leave the dating app crap out of that. I don't even know if you do that, but let's say like a guy genuinely walks up to you, right? At the gym, at church, on the sidewalk, you know, anywhere but the bathroom. Anywhere but the bathroom. Yeah. And what is the best way to approach you? Off the top of my head. Is that too much pressure? No, off the, just, I'm going to give you the off the top of my head answer. The thing that would make me say yes, no matter what you look like, smell like, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Okay, maybe if you smell bad, maybe no, but you come up to me and you say, there's this place I want to take you to and you already have your plan because you've been looking at me that long. I'm yours. Noted. Interesting. Like, hey, baby, do you like Italian? Because I wanted to. Take <laughs> Wait a minute. You to if a guy place. said to you, hey, like he just met, like you don't even remember what his name was because he just told it to you five seconds ago. Mm-hmm. And he said to you, hey, baby. Well, if he said, hey, baby, maybe not. Okay. Maybe that's subliminal. That's just a pickup line. But if yeah. if a man came up to me and, you know, just you have to have swag. I don't have male swag. I don't know. But you would have, like, come on. You're looking at me from across the room. You know where you want to take me on our first date. You already know. Come up to me and ask me to go there with you. Like, Hmm. you know, find the swag way to say it and just say it. Don't come up to me like, hey, would you like to go on a date sometime? Uh." Yeah. Have a plan, be ready. And if you don't have a plan when you ask me, have a plan immediately after. Like, you know what I mean? I don't want to have to do the dirty work because if I ask you out. (laughs) The dirty work. I know where I want to take you. Yeah. I have an idea of when. And I'm not going to ask you until I have at least those two ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. I'll play us in a time. And it doesn't matter what he looks like no nope it's a it's i don't i don't know some women might be different i won't speak for all of them but for me if you have game swag energy that's what's attractive to me and Mm. because most people are attractive but in some way shape or form you can find something attractive about them but for women the physical attraction comes after the emotional for men it's the opposite that's just science there's nothing wrong either way you look at it men look for the face and the body and the hair women are i don't disagree with you for the the ability to lead a situation the energy the charm the confidence all that stuff Mm -hmm. great answer thank you so the end you know this i i don't maybe what (laughs) this is this was really really good this is probably the one episode that i did not look at the camera the most because i was just so i was just so into the conversation so before we go um (laughs) Ian, and you can kind of help me out here. I want to invite our audience to send me a video message. If you are interested in being on our little show here, men and women, and, um, you know, show me why. Give me some enthusiasm. What else? What can I add to that, Ian? So basically, if you send us just a little like text message you're you're instantly not going to be on the show just take take out your phone record a little voice message and send it over to us tell us why you want to be on the show why you might be a good guest um and this is just like complete honesty and transparency here we're only going to pick a small portion of people and then also our goal here isn't we're not talking to the experts 
We're not talking to dating coach who makes a career out of this. We're learning about real people with their real experiences and their real opinions because those are the people that aren't heard as often as the so-called fangled experts out there. So we want to hear your story. We want to be we want to hear the real stories out there. So again, I'm going to toss this one back over to you. If you want to send us a direct message and be on our show, send us a quick video message. Why? And we'll get back to you. Yeah. And let me just add, not a dating request for any of our guests. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you get the idea. Basically, if you are looking for a date, yeah, <laughs> you are never going to be on but the show. We are not a match. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm yeah, I, matchmaker. Matchmaker. No. You get the idea. All right, we're done here. <laughs> yep, episode's over. Wait a minute. Peace. Mwah. I love you. Peace out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>